Hello everybody! Thank you for joining me once again. I'm the Crystal Manta and welcome to the second episode of our Zoodyssey series on Planet Zoo. Uh, last time we built kind of this opening lake plaza area and next we're going to start the actual hub area, the Worldly Woods, which I am super excited about. I've got some big plans for this hub area uh, and I think it's just going to look really nice. So right now we're just kind of starting the uh, opening like kind of stair catwalk area because this whole area is going to be kind of elevated because I want it to feel like you're in like a... The idea is that you're going to be kind of like a... a sort of a city up in the canopy. A little tree village. And I have some ideas to kind of create that illusion that are going to be really cool once I put into practice. The main one I do do in later in this video, and it, it ends up looking really cool. Right now, we're just kind of creating this the opening stairway. You'll notice that I have both stairs that go straight up, and also these ramps. Uh, I, I, I want to put, put in ramps whenever I can, because I do want this zoo to be, you know, wheelchair accessible. There's no guests in wheelchairs in this game, but you know, for realism's sake, you know, I, I would want them to be able to experience Zoodyssey as well. So for realism's sake, we are going to put in wheelchair ramps. Whenever, basically whenever possible. Uh, whenever I have uh, stairs, I'm going to try to either have ramps as well, do ramp, do just ramps and no stairs, or build like a fake elevator. I think it ultimately is gonna kind of, I don't know, just for realism's sake, I think it will look cool and will make it feel more like a real zoo. So I did make some edits to the stuff that we've built, uh, the stuff we've already built since last time, the opening plaza. I did make some edits. I changed the ticket sign at the ticket booth so that the dollar sign is the S at the end of the word tickets. I had someone suggest that to me in a private message. And then I also added a bathroom to the guest spawn building because, you know, when guests come in, you know, they've probably been driving for a while, depending on how long they've come to get here. So they're probably going to want to go to the bathroom first thing. So right now, uh, we're just kind of filling in the foliage here. Again, this is kind of a uh, trees from around the world kind of situation. Trees and plants from around the world. And I want it to look really dense and lush and overgrown. So I'm just kind of throwing plants everywhere I can get. And I think it ends up looking really nice. Just kind of throwing them around everywhere. In this video, we basically we start the hub world, we don't finish it because it's going to take several videos to finish the entire hub. I got a lot planned for it, including several habitats and a lot of shops and buildings. But we do get uh, the basic layout of it done, and then we build like another building, kind of like, it's kind of like the wheelchair ramps where it, doesn't really have much of a gameplay purpose, but it's more of a realism sake, and that's a stroller rental building. I've started putting those in all of my zoos, even though there's no strollers in the game, because I think it just makes it feel a bit more realistic, because obviously, you know, in a real zoo, you're going to have kids in strollers. And even though they're not in this game, I think just for realism's sake and kind of... I'm trying to find another word other than realism that kind of communicates that. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think, oh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Diegetic? Is that the word? I, I think it's kind of like what I'm thinking of. But, yeah. Just kind of a, things that don't really have a gameplay purpose, but just kind of help flesh out the world. Or flesh out the zoo. So right now I'm just adding kind of like a little awning thing to the ticket boots, just because I thought it would look nice, and that way you can kind of stand under it when you're scanning your pass, your ticket, or whatever. 
I think it ends up looking kind of nice. It's kind of basic, but it's what, it, you know, it doesn't need to be super crazy. Just needs to have little awnings. And already you can see this is looking really lush and foresty. And it just looks really cool. Off screen after the video was filmed, after this footage was filmed, I ended up getting rid of that palm tree that's kind of at the edge of the... Sorry, that was my phone going off. I should silence that while I'm recording this. But, uh... There's a palm tree kind of at the base of where the ticket... Not ticket boots, the... Ah, uh, what's it called? The turnstile. I do get rid of it just because it kind of blocked the view of the hub sign, the sign kind of name of the hub. It kind of blocked the view from the lake area, so I just got rid of it. It was just kind of in the way. So right now we are now finally starting the hub. And this is going to be, like I said, just kind of a uh, city in the, in the tree canopy. And like I said, I've got a lot of cool ideas for how to kind of create that illusion. You can see I'm having kind of some trouble with the path here. It was really annoying to get it to do what I wanted it to do. But I finally managed to get it to work. It's basically the idea that I had to kind of create the idea that you're in the canopy. As you'll see me laying it out now. Basically, the hub is shaped like a giant ring, and in the center, I kind of, or I'll explain it when we get to it, so I have something to talk about then. This episode is a lot less, I, I think this video will be a lot less commentary heavy, just because a lot of the first episode was kind of just kind of explaining the basics, you know, where I've kind of gotten all that out of the way. I've gotten the, the prologue, all the exposition, if you will. But as you can see, it's kind of shaped like this big donut. Now I'm really excited to get to the part where we actually start creating the, uh, the pit, as I have called it. The undergrowth, I, 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 you could call it. So as you can see, I'm kind of like diagonaling out these corners here. There's a, it's a trick you can do that's pretty cool, is if you have like a corner like that, like a right angle inward facing corner, and you uh, place a path kind of going out from it and then delete it, it rounds it out. So now you can kind of see what I'm doing. I've created this huge pit, and now I'm taking these black plaster floor tiles that are flexi color, and I'm just duplicating it, them a bunch to kind of give the impression that it's a dark sh like it's you're so high up that you can't see the forest floor and I'm just gonna take just a whole metric ton of trees and just kind of sink them into the floor just to make it as lush and vibrant as possible and it ends up looking really cool by the end of the video I'm thinking of putting, putting like, uh, speakers down there, because you have these speakers in the game that can play, like, you know, ambient sounds, and I'm thinking of putting, like, jungle sound speakers down there, just to make it kind of give the impression that there's animals down there. I want the impression to be, like, that by going into the worldly woods, you've suddenly tr been teleported to this, uh forest jungly canopy now part of the struggle that you'll see is around the edges because when you're down on the platform if you were to look across to the other side you would be able to see the rim of the pit now part of that will be hidden with buildings part of that will be with extra plants it's it'll be kind of annoying to do so that'll take a lot of finessing to kind of make the illusion really convincing from like a guest's eye view. So I think that's going to be the hardest part. As you can see here, I'm using the plaster black walls to kind of hide it by giving it the impression that uh, it's just more of the dark blackness. 
So here we're gonna start the uh, the stroller rental building, and the path the pathing for this build just once we start putting in the ticket the info stands, which is kind of like the ticket rental booths. Man, those were annoying to attach to the path. I had to finagle with this path so much. I'm not sure what exactly was happening. You can see I'm kind of struggling with it. I don't know why they wouldn't connect. It took me a good five minutes, and I don't know what that... There, that's a weird glitch that I hope they fix. You saw that uh, vendor staff was just kind of like dancing in place and I don't know why he, they do that sometimes. It's just a weird glitch that I will never understand. Hopefully it's maybe it's because they're on an elevated path but I've seen staff members do that even on grounded paths. So I don't know what's happening there. So what I ended up having to do was kind of move the whole building back a bit so it's not right up against the main plaza. I, I would have preferred to have it right up against it, but it wasn't going to let me do that in order to actually connect it. But I managed to kind of uh, hide the seams between them fairly well with the rock work and foliage and building pieces. And I think it, uh, I think it came out really nicely all together, which you'll see later on. So now that we finally got the, the actual path finished, I'm just kind of laying out basic barriers here. Again, I really like the uh, new world building theme. It's what we're going to use for most of this, uh, you know, this hub area. And I've also added a... Uh, Man, I am losing my train of thought a lot today. We're also going to add this uh, staff building, just so they don't have to walk all the way down to the administration's building down there. Now we're just kind of laying out the basic walls. So this inner, there's this outdoor kind of section where the lines to rent strollers would be. Here is the passageway to, you know, the guest building. I should not be recording this when I'm so tired, but whatever. I'm trying to keep from yawning, so I apologize if that happens again. I know that was happening last video, too. So right now we're just kind of uh, constructing the main bit. I kind of had this idea, I've done this before in another zoo that I had a while ago, not on camera, but I just thought it was a cool idea to have like a clock tower at the top of the stroller rental building, but to have like increasingly smaller squares going up, like a weird staircase or like almost like a tiered cake, I guess might be the best way to describe it. And then to have the roofs actually be these uh, flower beds that we used on the guest spawn building kind of atrium thing. They came with the aquatic pack and I really love them. And just gonna have kind of the roof of the building be that so it's very lush and overgrown looking. And I think it ends up turning out really nicely. For the roof of this indoor section where the strollers will actually be kept, I, I did go for more of this, this kind of a basic uh, roof design. I didn't really have anything more interesting in mind for it, so we just kind of went with this basic roof, but I think it still came out really well. Now some of you may be wondering when I put these eaves on, why am I not using the pieces specifically designed for corners? Why am I leaving that little notch at the corner of the roof? I don't know, I just kind of like the little notch. I won't use it for every build, but I kind of like having the little gap there. It just kind of depends on how I'm feeling at the moment. I couldn't get the path to go how I wanted it to with the black path and 
the uh, brown wooden path, so I just made it all the brown wooden path. I didn't want to have to deal with that anymore. So now we're adding kind of the facade. And I do a similar thing how I did with the ticket booth building with kind of the log functioning as a, a counter because I just thought it looked cool that way and it helps create a consistency. And I'm just kind of make trying to make it look really overgrown like this is because this is a village in the treetops so obviously the uh you know the plants are kind of overgrowing and of course my phone goes off again apparently i didn't silence it well enough so i don't know if you know there was a glitch i was encountering right here where nothing was showing up in the build menus i don't know if you guys noticed that but i ended up having to get or go back to the main menu and load back into the, the game again and it seemed to fix it so i'm not sure what the heck was happening there but going back in and out seemed to fix the issue like nothing would just show up in the build menu if you filtered it at all but it seemed to be a one-time glitch so now we're creating a nice little stroller sign just kind of beautifying the front of it and now we get to my favorite part which is adding the ivy and the vines just making it look super overgrown and wilderness-y. I really love the ivy in this game. Just kind of putting it everywhere. Making it look like nature is reclaiming the buildings. It's just a really cool aesthetic that I really like. And here I thought I would create a cool little archway that guests would go under. When they were, uh, you know, going to rent a stroller. I end up making it a bit taller because I don't want people to hit their heads. Especially taller people. I thought about moving, cloning the sign and moving it here, but the log just isn't flat enough to really do it without things clipping in and out. And I thought about putting a big info sign there. But I ended up going with a smaller one just because it clipped through less. So here I'm making it a bit taller so you don't bonk your noggin when you go to rent a stroller. And I'm just doing some interior lighting, nothing too uh, fantastical. I wish there were more lights that hung from the ceiling in this game. Even a lot of the hanging lights are more like from the wall. But I had this. I think this is an Indian light that I ended up using. It's like a kind of pot with a flame on it. And it looked it looked pretty nice. So now I'm putting a sign for, for parents who are renting strollers. I think it says like keep an eye on your cubs or something like that. I just thought it was kind of kinda of cute. Keeping the animal theme for, you know, keep an eye on your children. Keep your kids with you in the car, hands and feet in the in the vehicle at all times. And I, I I don't know, I think it turned out really nicely. And then I just added this little chimpanzee sign with the baby on it. Just to kind of tie everything together. So now I'm using this uh, stroller thing that I found on the workshop. It uses these little giraffe signs and some other pieces to give the impression of strollers. I will put the link to that Steam store, Steam Workshop page in the description of this video if you guys want to check it out for yourselves, which you should because they're really cool. So right here I'm just kind of like trying to decorate the outer wall a bit. Just make it look a bit less boring. I'm just kind of putting some benches down, some trash cans, because I had forgotten to do that as we were building previously. So the last thing we need is a, a bunch of litter, because guests in this game love littering. If there's not a trash can every five feet, they will litter. 
So there's the clock, the clock part of the clock tower. And now I'm just covering the roof in plants. Making it look like even the tops of the buildings are foresty and whatnot. And then I saw, I noticed these as I was building. And it's supposed to be where the windows would be of the uh, staff rest building. You're supposed to have the window pieces, but I didn't want to do that. So I just put these here, these weird grates, just to kind of cover it up. And I think it ended up looking kind of cool. It doesn't serve a functional purpose. I wasn't trying to emulate any sort of actual architectural thing. I was just trying to create a weird structure on the side of the building to uh, cover up those window bits. But you know what? I, I like it. And then I found this... Uh, like handicap wheelchair sign that I was going to use, but I couldn't find a place that looked nice. So I think the uh, stroller building is pretty much done at this point. And I had all this space here uh, between the main gate and the stroller rental building, and I wanted to fill it with something. But I didn't want to fill it with a shop because the building would just block the view of the stroller rental building. So I decided to build like a little, uh, just a little seating area. Just to kind of, you know, fill the space just so there's something there. And I really like the way that it turned out. It really, uh, and it's mainly just to fill in space. I acknowledge that. But it looks really nice, all things, you know, all things considered. This is also my first time exp uh, trying to build, like, make a, a structure that's multiple building grids at once, rather than all on the same grid. I mean, I've done it where I've, like, removed pieces so I can move them more precisely, but, like, trying to combine two building grids together. And I, I don't know. I think it looks all right. The the, uh, the building on different grids part, not the seating area. I think that looks pretty nice. I guess I'm just not talented enough to actually uh, build on multiple grids for the most part. I'll, I'm gonna have to practice more about that. But so I've just created, tried to create this little garden seating area that I think, like I said, ends up turning really cool. But I also have to block the view of the outside to kind of create the illusion that this is a treetop canopy. So I'm using rock work to uh, block the view from the outside. I think it ends up looking really nice. It kind of creates a, a kind of a contrast to the rest of the woodenness of everything. Everything else so far is wooden, either trees or buildings, and I think this is just a nice little thing. We're also going to build an actual gate leading to the entrance to Worldly Woods, so that also helps block it. So now I'm just creating some, you know, foliage and uh, I want to say tree work to mix in with the phrase rock work, but that sounds wrong. It doesn't sound like a real thing. So now I'm just filling in this spot here to kind of get the give the idea that this is part of the tree canopy below, kind of peeking through. That guy was stuck again. I don't know. I don't know what's happened with that. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna see if anyone else is having issues with that. So I decided to reuse the uh, the log fence that I had made in the first episode. Just because I liked it so much and I wanted to use it more for consistency. And I also like using these logs. I know you've seen me use them a lot before. Just as like columns or whatever. I think it just looks cool. And here I am filling the gaps with these rocks again. Just so it fills in space and uh, fills in the seams between the buildings. I'm going to have to do that a lot, unfortunately, but I don't know, I think it ends up looking nice. 
we're just kind of beautifying the area real quick. Just putting in all sorts of types of different plants. I had the idea to put in like a waterfall on these grates. Like there's some kind of like little vent behind them. Just create a little water feature. I don't know, I think it, it ends up looking really nice. And then I had this idea You'll see me, I'm messing with this little goals cut out. I actually put some, put one near the ticket building and at the top of our little waterfall mountain at the front. I did it after last, after recording. I did it off camera between episodes. And sort of the idea I had with this little seagull is if you've ever been, if any of you have ever been to Disney World, they have what's called hidden Mickeys which are the hidden Mickey, sh which are like the three, you know, three circle Mickey Mouse shape hidden around the park, be it in rock formations or whatever. And I just thought it'd be cool to hide this little seagull around and have that be our, like a hidden Mickey. So by the end of this video, I have four hid hiding locations. Well, not really four, four, three hidden locations for the seagull and I'm gonna make a little sign for it uh, later on in this video just kind of explaining giving some some lore I guess to the to the zoo and I decided that the goal is just gonna kind of be our mascot so here I'm just kind of using that fence a bit more just to kind of a uh, block off view of the edge of the path because it just would look weird. I'm really liking how it's all turning out so far. Uh, I still haven't put the path on the workshop yet. I need to do that. I need to actually get on that. Here I'm sinking another education board into the wall. Uh, the recent update that we had, uh, 1.5, actually allows for custom billboards, so I might get into GIMP and, uh, you know, make some of those, uh, custom billboards, custom, like, education signs, so you can kind of override the basic images, so I might mess with that a bit. Now I'm just adding some more, uh, security cameras, because, you know, who doesn't, like, being watched while you're at the at the the fun zoo park also because I just I don't want tons of crime because that's what's gonna happen if uh, I don't add cameras I gotta gotta keep people on uh, what's the phrase not keep people on their toes I mean I guess like that works too people need surveillance I work retail, I, I know people are evil when you give them the chance. So now I'm just going ahead and adding more trash cans and benches and all that fun stuff. Thought about adding this little canopy thing, but it just didn't look right. So now I'm kind of, I'm going to add a border to the, uh, uh, what's it, the thingamajigger. The border to the, the, the pit. I can't think of words today. I don't know what's going on with that. But kind of the, the pit that we've got going on here. The uh, undergrowth. That's what I had called it. And I had these corners open left, and I didn't know what to put there. I could have used the log fence, but I decided to build like a little hut structure. That I would be, that kind of like, I guess these would be the supports of the building? I don't know. I just thought it would look cool. I wasn't thinking too much about logistics. I do end up sinking it a bit lower so you don't have these metal huts just jutting out because that would just block the view a lot. But it kind of creates the appearance of like little water towers or something. I don't know exactly what I was going for, but it ends up looking pretty nice. 
Once I sink them down, that is. It's also nice to use pieces that are not part of the New World set, because the thatched roof is, I think, part of the... I think it's part of the South America set, honestly. Which, I generally don't use those thatched roof pieces, but they worked really cool here. So now I'm just kind of uh, placing them at all the, the corner, all eight eight corners I think it is and then I sink them down in so it's just kind of the roofs that you see but I think it ends up looking really nice there we go so now you can just kind of look down into the pit and just see these towers and I just kind of added a couple of vines here and there not too many just to get the picture across and then a smaller vine hanging down from that one I consider putting a goal down there like a, a hidden Mickey goal but it was just too hard to see basically no matter what angle you're at so I just kind of gave up on it so now here we get to the goal sign uh, where I give our, our friend name I think he's a uh, our, our little mascot his name is Golbert actually just because I, I think that's fun. And so this Goldberg on top of the sign is mainly just kind of an example. Like, here's what to look for. So I wanted to use this sign, but it doesn't... Because if you sink... If you... Certain signs... I'm losing... I'm stuttering over my words. But certain signs, if you write your text on them and then kind of sink them into the, the wall that you've put them on, the text will still show through, but you won't see the physical sign. But that one doesn't work, and most of the other ones that do are like electrical, so the text lights up at night. So I thought about using the uh, you know these letters, but they're just too big to help write the whole thing that I wanted to write. So I think I do end up using the glowing text sign. I don't really like it, but it's it's not too bad. I think there might be actually be a way to turn the light off so that you just see the text. So I ended up writing, I tried to write one piece of the phrase at a time, but the text was just too small because the text gets smaller the more, uh, the more, uh, the more text you have on the sign, the smaller the font gets. And so you, to keep the font somewhat large, you kind of have to do it in little chunks like this that are similarly similarly lengthed so instead of try to spot him hiding around the zoo all as one thing you kind of have to divide it into little chunks like this to keep it a somewhat consistent font size it's kind of annoying but it's whatever So that basically finishes Golbert's little thing, except I do add a little arrow pointing to him like, Hey, this is uh, what you should be looking for. I thought about having him be like a 2D thing in the wall, but the beak isn't quite as wide as the rest of the cutout. So the beak just sinks into the thing. So now here's a little, here's the arrow that we are using to... Uh, show the hey you should go uh, look at him this is what he looks like although maybe it's mean to have the uh, goals at the beginning before you even know to look for him I don't know but here's the little sign I think it's fun I take these light posts and kind of just sink them in or I do it for this one on this side just to illuminate Golbert if you're here at night most zoos aren't open at night but, you know, whatever. This zoo runs 24 hours, apparently. So now I'm just kind of trying to fill in more of this space here. I use these scaviola, I think it's how you pronounce it. These bushes that are used in like rainforest exhibits. And they kind of look like the tops of trees that are sunken into the ground. So I kind of just grabbed a bunch of those, made them into a group. And then just copied and pasted them all around. And it, it works out pretty nicely. 
It's just to get it a bit more dense around the edges. So I'm just kind of posting it around here. And then the uh, buildings on the around the other edges should also help the help you know hide everything. So it's not gonna be just the bushes. So so far it's it's looking really nice. It really helps create the canopy illusion. And now I figured I'd just add some like mist emitters, make it look like this is a, a steamy kind of tropical rainforest. I'm just kind of placing them all over. It just ends up looking really nice. Just kind of adding a bit more trash cans so I don't have to do it later. I mean, I'll still have to put more in later, obviously. Right now, I just decided I'm going to take... Uh, because when I put the first two goals at the beginning, you'll see where I have them here. One is like the secret path next to the ticket building ones on top of here they're all part of one group so there's just a group that's just all the goals i had trouble getting this goal because he's kind of in a spot that makes it so you try to click on other things so i had to move him and then add him to the group and then move him back individually here you can see i'm trying to add a goal down here and I'm kind of testing what the view would be like, and it's just, he's just too hard to see, basically no matter what position you're in. So I just decided to kind of forego that. So now, uh, finally, for the last part of this video, we are going to create the, uh, the main, the actual gate of the, of the, uh, of the Worldly Woods. Man, I cannot think right now. Can I keep losing my train of thought? I don't know what's happening. Words, come to me, good friends. So we're just creating, it's gonna be like, uh, almost like a castle. I think it ends up looking really, really neat. I'm still gonna add some stuff to it, it's not done yet. But it, uh, it's almost like a castle. It's just uh, jutting up out of the rainforest or the woods or whatever. And there's two towers on top of it. Yep, I'm starting the towers right now. They're not exceedingly tall. They're just kind of like, kind of parapets. That's the word, right? For like little towers on a, on a castle. It's a parapet, I think. And again, I'm going to repeat the kind of floral... What are these even called? Like, they're just like plant squares. I don't even know what they're called. But I'm just going to go ahead and repeat that trick. Just for consistency. You know, there's consistent uh, aesthetics. I do end up putting an actual wall around the edges so it doesn't look so weird right here. It looks a bit better that way with an actual like little wall. And then the front of the castle will have the name Weirdly Woods on it, and then the back towards the hub will just be covered in ivy and plant life. And it's going to look really nice. Maybe not as nice as I wanted it to. I'll have to go back and edit the plants. But you'll, you'll see what they look like when we get to that part of the video. I noticed that in these commentaries I keep talking about things that are way far ahead in the video. I mean, it's not way far ahead. We're starting it now. I'm just adding a bunch of ivy. And then I found these things, I forgot what they're called. And I've never used these before because I didn't know you were supposed to put them on walls. I thought they were just weird sideways plants. I'm dumb like that. But I'm just kind of like uh, covering the walls with it to make it look super overgrown and kind of run down. Is run down the right word? I want to use like nature just kind of reclaiming it. Not that. I mean, it's a, it's a little city in the tree canopy, so it's not like nature had to reclaim it. Nature was always there. So now I'm adding even more trees to the top to make it look super lush and full. So like once you approach this building, you know what you're getting into. 
And now we add the name, The Worldly Woods. I don't know, I like the name. It kind of sounds like a Banjo-Kazooie level, but, you know, that's fine. It, this is kind of a more fantastical zoo, like I probably said last time. It's not going to be super realistic. It will in terms of animal choices, but I'm going to have really ambitious builds. It's going to be more like a zoo theme park, like an eccentric trillionaire build a zoo. Now I'm just kind of adding these, like, tree signs just to kind of uh, communicate the woods aspect. Put some leaf uh, signs here. I don't know, I think it looks nice. I'm gonna go ahead and add more, obviously, uh, once I come up with some ideas. Or if you guys want to suggest ideas for stuff to put on the top, that is dope too. Also putting some ivy and more trees. Just kind of fill in the gaps beneath. But I think we're done. I will see you in the walkthrough. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the video. If you want to see more content like it, be sure to like the video, hit the subscribe button, and ring the little bell to make sure you're notified of all future videos. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.